Were you brought to Hawaii on the basis of a personal choice or as a result of your uh, circumstances, uh, your duties with the president at that time? It was, I would like to say, it was uh, in performance of an official duty. Uh, coming to Hawaii was not a personal choice. As a matter of fact, up to the time we were on board the plane proceeding to Guam, our understanding was we were going to be flown out or flown to uh, Ilocos Norte as I had been briefed the night before by the uh, base commander of the United States uh, Air Force Base in Clark that uh, we will be flown out early in the morning to uh, Gabo Airport in Ilocos Norte. Okay, so uh, to your knowledge, uh, President Marcos was brought to Hawaii according to his wishes or against it? To the best of my knowledge, and uh, fortunately this was confirmed by many people, the, uh, the uh, uh, general escort who was assigned to uh, the Joint United States Military Advisory Group or the JUSMAG, his... Uh, Ted Allen or General Ted Allen and uh, also confirmed last year this is no longer a secret as uh, Mrs. Aquino has said during an interview of uh, Magtanong sa Pangulo and we have the tape here, the lawyers have the tape uh, of that interview with uh, Radio Veritas February of 1988 uh, where she said that uh, she wanted uh, uh, Mr. Marcos out. If he was not dying, he wanted, she wanted him to be out uh, when she was called by then Ambassador uh, Bosworth. Okay, um, you have remained with uh, President oh, Marcos. By the way, I'd like to say that, that in the early morning of uh, February 25, uh, when the news or when the responsible officers of Clark Air Force Base, uh, General Allen and the base commander, General uh, Major General Gordon Williams, uh, saw President Marcos in his officers' quarters where he was temporarily billeted and was uh, told that uh, he has to be flown out early that morning. He was... Uh, surprised because the agreement or the arrangement was that in the morning we will be flown to Ilocos Norte. And uh, uh, first of all, we were told that we have to be removed from or evacuated from the Clark, from Clark Air Force Base because the place was surrounded by the New People's Army. And uh, it was a very shallow lie. We said... Uh, <laughs> You, you tell us the truth uh, from one military man to another military man and uh, did you get an orders from up there uh, from uh, your uh, civilian from the civilian authority to get us out of the airport by early this morning and, and uh, finally major general gordon williams admitted admitted that he had been given an order to fly us out of the country and that was it we were we were not going to let it uh, just be an easy compliance of an order. We were going to fight it out. We had, remember, we still had our long arms. We had our short arms. And we could have created the scene in, uh, in that circumstance. But uh, President Marcos said, uh, don't, don't put up any fight. Uh, did they say, uh, uh, gen generals at uh, Clark Field as to who in the higher up uh, echelons gave the order to uh, remove President Marcos and his entourage from Clark? Well, our understanding then was that uh, General Major General Williams and British General Ted Allen were given instructions by Ambassador Bosworth and Ambassador Bosworth was given instruction by his people in Washington DC and uh, little did we know, or we had no inkling that uh, 
then Mrs. Aquino was uh, in touch or was being uh, was being uh, called by uh, for uh, for instruction by uh, Mr. Bo Bosworth until uh, until uh, March or April of the same year when here in Honolulu a writer Sandra Burton who has by the way written a book on uh, on the Philippines vis-a-vis uh, -vis the uh, February uh, turmoil has said that uh, when she met with us she said that uh, she learned as early as February that uh, instructions were given to the base commander that we should be out flown out of the country uh, first hour in the morning and that uh, the order came from Mrs. Uh, Aquino from from according to her from her uh, uh, source in the US Embassy all right well you have remained with President Marcos now for more than three years in Hawaii how do you feel about being away from your own country for such a long time and uh, do you want to return I have always wanted to be able to go back, but uh, here I feel that I'm still performing an official duty. Uh, I, uh, I uh, remember for a fact that in 1966, or yes, 1966, the President, President Marcos, signed uh, an executive order, uh, I think it's numbered 41, and it is series of 1966 designating two military assistants and six enlisted men to be assigned to uh, President Macapagal. As in the United States and in other civilized countries, former heads of states or monarchs or kings or emperors or uh, presidents or prime ministers are allowed the services of military assistants. I I'm in a position where it's hard to, or, or one would be hard up in saying that uh, I am on an official uh, uh, mission, except uh, for the fact that I, I would, I would, uh, I, I interpret this as a continuation of my assignment from uh, 1975 to 1986, 86 to the present. Uh, President Marcos has. Uh, asked me to stay and uh, head the staff of more than 40 exclusive of volunteers volunteers in the sense that they do uh, camera work uh, security guards driving and so on and so forth we still have a sizable uh, staff to contain with the federal government has to uh, of the united states has to deal with somebody uh, before going to or before personally approaching President and Mrs. Marcos. So I, I am happy that I, my services are still needed here. I am also happy to report to the Filipino people that uh, in spite of the fact that President Marcos is very sick, and in spite of the fact that there are many threats on his life, or even when we just arrived, he is still safe and we are performing our job as security officers.